doesn't look like we've let early people in yet. Are we letting in the early people? No, we are. Okay. Oh, the early people. All the early people are getting here. This is great. Oh, but I can't see their faces because we're in webinar mode. Hello, early people. Welcome, welcome. I'm Billy Wimstadt, the executive director of MVP. And um, we started a minute early so that all the early people, we want to give you an assignment because a lot of times the earliest people are the most dedicated. So I have a fun challenge for you, which is, is there anyone else in your life who should be on this call? A family member, a friend? go ahead and text them or call them right now. I'm going to talk for a little while, but the good part of the call is later in about 10 minutes when other people start talking besides me. So just take a minute, pull out your phone and start looking through your texts. You know way more people than you know. It'll jog your memory and just, just text people, call people, send them the link. Um, we're all organizers here. We're going to hear from some great organizers and this is a chance for all of us to practice organizing. Um, because it's all hands on deck. It's going to take all of us. So welcome. And we already have 140 people on the call. We've had over 400 people RSVP. So, um, and, and this call is really, you guys are really in for a treat. So take a moment, spread the love. A lot of people don't know about this. A lot of people need some inspiration right now. They're going to get that on this call. Um, and at the end, quick plug, you're going to hear about all the ways that you can get involved. We wanna make organizing money for the groups you're gonna to hear tonight on the front lines just as easy and compelling as writing postcards, right? So um, let's pull up the agenda and this is gonna be our program for tonight's call. So we're gonna hear from five states in, you can picture them in clockwise order um, going from Wisconsin in the Midwest to over to Pennsylvania, down to Georgia and North Carolina, and then over to, to Nevada to close us out. And just to know, let, we, we intentionally skipped Arizona and Michigan because we featured them on the last call. Um, so no shade on any other states. Um, and then at the end, we're gonna hear from Shauna and Peggy, uh, Shauna from our donor organizing team and Peggy, who's a volunteer donor organizer in Seattle, because we're all organizers too, right? And our job as organizers is just like the groups you're going to hear from are trusted messengers in their own communities. We are all trusted messengers in our communities. And our job is to be just as good at donor organizing and being a supply line for their work as they are at voter organizing. Not to be competitive, but that is the best way to honor their work is to be just as serious about organizing as they are. So let's get inspired and go organize everyone we know. That's how we're going to do this, which is to keep winning. And that's our theme for tonight. Um, so all of us have two jobs in this final stretch, to donate as big as we can, and then to spread the word to as many other people as we can to donate. So you're going to see the information to donate in a moment. And I want to invite everyone to introduce yourself in the chat. You can say your name, where you're from, how you're thinking about the midterms, and also put a dollar sign if you have already donated. If you've already donated this year, we want to celebrate everyone who's already donated, who did the right thing and donated early. If you already did it, then for you, this is a thank you call. This is where you get to be thanked and get to hear what your money is doing and feel really proud and connected to the work you're already funding. Good job. And also, if you've already hosted a house party or helped organize other donors, I want you to put a plus sign in the chat. And you can put multiple plus signs or multiple dollar signs. Um, and if you are, so if you've already donated or already hosted a house party, put a, a dollar sign or a plus sign in the chat. If you're thinking about donating or planning to donate or open to donating or hosting an event, put three dollar signs or three plus signs in the chat if you're going to um, planning to host or co-host an event. And, you know, September, here we are, mid-September, 55 days out the last best month to give money. So yes, money makes a difference in October too, but it makes a much bigger difference in September as you're going to hear from these groups. So you have about two weeks 
to donate everything you can and get everyone you know to donate anything they can to make the biggest difference that we all want to make this fall. And our donor organizers and advisors are standing by here to assist you. I want to give a super shout out as we're talking about this to Paul and Andrew Bundy, who made a, a, a goal using their fundraising tool, an ambitious goal to raise $100,000. And two days ago, they surpassed that goal. I want to give a shout out to Tom Newman and Laura Gotsman, who met on the last call we did in the chat. And they, they're both in the Bay Area and they decided to do a virtual house party. And that, isn't that amazing? They met in the chat and now they're organizing a house party. So sometimes all we need is another person to do even more amazing things. So think about who's your, your one person who you can do even more amazing things if you get together with them. Maybe you'll meet them in the chat this time. And that's what we're doing here. We're building community. We're building connection and inspiration. And then we're talking taking it out into our lives, into the world, and sharing with other people to be connected to. So before we talk about the election, I just want to take a moment to celebrate the incredible victories we've had over the past six weeks. Kansas, incredible. Alaska, incredible. The biggest action ever on climate. Huge federal legislation on economic fairness, healthcare, drug prices. Then we won another huge victory on student debt. $500 billion dollars on student debt, in student debt relief, over 40 million people getting student debt relief, 20 million people, their debt will be completely wiped out. Not to mention all their families and spouses and parents and kids. So in reality, it's more like 100 million people who are being helped by this one thing that was accomplished. And none of this would have happened. None of this would have happened if our incredible local partners hadn't won multiple Senate races, multiple House races, and the presidency that allowed these huge, enormous historic victories to happen. And we helped them do that. This is what winning looks like. That's the theme of our call today, because we need to feel that. This is what it looks like. And I got a text I'm going to read you from Astra Taylor from Debt Collective, which is a small, scrappy startup that led the student debt cancellation fight for the past 10 years when no one believed it was possible, right? No one believed we could cancel student debt. And on August 24th, the day they won student debt relief, I got this text from Astra. I just picked up the phone and I thought it was my delivery person. And it was Elizabeth Warren calling to thank me. Very sweet, today was a big milestone. We made them go over 10K when they wanna do that. I'll take it. thank you so, so much for getting us here. So, and a few days ago, she texted me with a poll where youth support for Biden jumped 22 points, 22 points in a month. That's incredible. So that was a good investment, right? Dollars, which helped a hundred million people. And we got a 22 point bump. That sounds like a smart investment. Let's do more stuff like that. So this is what it looks like to win y'all. This is what it looks like to win. And I really want people to take a moment to zoom out and savor this and really celebrate. I'm raising you a glass. You know, if you have a glass, like cheers, you know, we all did this together. And, you know, politically last month was one of the most successful months of our entire lifetimes. I don't care how old you are, you know, compare it to any other, you know, month. It's one of the top ones. We got Trump out. 2018, last month, electing Obama, it was a big deal. And I just want to, because everyone was so miserable before that, we have so much to celebrate. And together we made history. We have the momentum. This is what winning looks like. We're ready to make some more history. Let's do this tonight. So going to our map. Um, so first of all, this is a PAC call. So we can talk about all the elections we went to. We have state PACs. So we can talk about state level races as well. And we have a lot of states to talk about today. So a couple comments in the map. One, it's a pretty focused map of the most typical, typical Senate and statewide races, which are basically seven states, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. So we're doubling down in those states. Our strategy is to double down the states and even especially in Wisconsin, Nevada, and Georgia, which are on the razor's edge for the Senate, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Nevada are, are on the razor's edge for the governor and statewide races. The other ones are really close, but those are even more close. 
The most important lesson we learn every cycle though, is you don't just invest in the, the close tipping point races because you never know how the dynamics are gonna change, if the polling's gonna be off, if there's gonna be a scandal that we're playing offense or defense. So we have to invest robustly in playing both offense and defense. From you know, So we're also investing very robustly in Florida and Texas and Ohio and New Hampshire, which could all be super close to, which could all tip to. So MVP's model is to invest in concentric circles in over 40 states and to go deep in the, the states that it looks like closest. So, and hey, that's how we helped win in Kansas and Alaska when very, very few other national funders were funding there. And we didn't do it by investing in the last minute when it was suddenly hot. We've been investing in Kansas and Alaska since two, 2014, before MVP was even officially founded, consistently, right? So we're so proud of that. So, and finally, um, in addition to the statewide races, we're doing a major investment in the House. So as the donor said to me recently, it would really suck to pick up two votes in the Senate and not need Mansion and Cinema anymore, except then we have to not then then we can't pass anything because because we lost by a few votes in the house which is looking increasingly likely the house picture is looking better and better and and some of these key house house districts overlap with the statewide races in places like pennsylvania and michigan some are in redder states like kansas and iowa and alaska and some are in bluer states like new york new jersey california oregon washington illinois so we're watching the polling closely and we're raising money to invest in all of the top battleground races all over the country, leaving nothing on the table. When you give to MVP, essentially what we do is we're tracking all the closest, most important races in the country and which groups are on the ground that we believe will make the biggest impact with the next 10,000 or the next $100,000. And our assessments keep evolving by the week. It's like, uh, I wish you could see our grant making process. We call it grant making Tetris. Um, we have this amazing team that's always looking at where is the best place to in invest the next dollar. Um, a donor was saying to me a couple of days ago, I'm getting so many emails from candidates that's hard to tell which ones are in really competitive races and which ones are just saying they are and are kind of manipulating the polling data to try to get my money. Guess what, folks? We've solved that problem for you. All the groups you're going to hear from on this call work up and down the ballot. So it's not just giving to one candidate to buy more TV ads. They're going to help the Senate candidate in their state. They're going to help the governor candidate. They're going to help the Secretary of State, the state Supreme Court, the House, the state legislature, the down ballot candidates, the attorney general, the DAs, the ballot measures. It's like with your one donation to these groups, you're making like 20 or 30 donations for the price of one, right? Um, so after the election, they're going to also hold the candidates accountable so they actually pass transformative legislation. Uh, so it's really quite a good use of your money. So without further ado, we are going to hear from our first speaker, um, Rima Ahmed, MVP State Advisor in Wisconsin. And Rima really needs no introduction. She's one of MVP's OG oldest uh, state advisors and has done an incredible job building the organizing ecosystem in Wisconsin and seeding new groups and collaborations all over the state. She also runs MVP's Muslim Voter Project. Welcome, Rima. I can't wait to hear. Tell us all about Wisconsin. Oh my goodness. Well, you said it, right? Like if folks are looking for where the most highly contested races are in the country, we'll be talking about them today. But um, hello, hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Excited to be connecting with you all virtually. Again, my name is Rima Ahmed, and I'm from the great state of Wisconsin. Um, and let's talk about Wisconsin, y'all, um, because there is a lot at stake. And when I say there's a lot at stake, I mean, no biggie. There's just democracy hanging in the balance. Um, in Wisconsin, on the one hand, we have one of the most highly contested U.S. Senate races in the country with our Democratic Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes challenging Big Lie promoter and January 6th defender Ron Johnson. And on the other hand, we have an extremely close governor's race with our Democratic Governor Tony Evers challenged by a Trump endorsed and frankly terrifying billionaire Tim Michaels. Both of these races have been rated a toss up by Cook Political Report. So in true Wisconsin fashion, the elections will be close. But what does this mean for us 
In the Senate, we need to codify Roe, protect voting rights, maintain our democracy. We know this. In Wisconsin, Governor Evers is the only thing keeping us from a Republican trifecta in the state. And I'm talking about 2020 election deniers who would implement Trump's strategies to overturn for future elections if they are in power in 2024. And though I don't have this person listed here, we have a critical attorney general race as well with our current AG, Josh Call, keeping at bay an 1849 um, anti-abortion law in the state. So did I say these elections are really close? Um, just today, the Marquette Law School poll has Governor Evers in a narrow lead and Mandela Barnes one point behind. So um, again, the work that we are doing in the next month and a half is gonna be extremely critical. And so I'm really excited to share a little bit more about that work. And so what we're seeing here is we are leading with the coalition that helped us win in the governor's race in 2018 and flip Wisconsin back to its progressive blue roots in 2020. This means supporting organizing in BIPOC communities with young people and centering the issues impacting our lives like healthcare, climate change and immigration. In this slide, you'll see some of our partners with the Wisconsin Working Families Party. And since the primary last month, they've expanded their canvases into Green Bay, a key city with the highest Latinx population outside of Southeast Wisconsin. And why are we talking about Green Bay? Well, Green Bay is also a really critical area that progressives must organize in to stand against the GOP, where we already have right-wing groups that have been threatening election administrators and trying to unseat the Democratic mayor there. So it's incredible the work that they are doing. This is just one piece of that. And another strategy is um, grassroots groups, right? Grassroots groups all across the state have been innovating, even amidst an ever evolving fundraising and organizing landscape. Groups out here have had to learn to pivot during a pandemic. Folks may remember we were the first um, state to hold an election um, in the pandemic during uh, April, 2020. And one of the groups that led the way with these innovations and tried out new um, strategies was Progress North, which we see some of the great organizers there. Progress North, for folks who don't know, is an organization that was seeded by MVP and they're in the northernmost part of the state in, um, in uh, Ashland and Superior, Wisconsin. And they have innovated with a deep canvassing program that cuts through racist and divisive dog whistles in the Senate race this year in order to connect our communities around a common goal this election cycle, electing Mandela Barnes and re-electing Tony Evers. And so once again, as when you all think of Wisconsin, I want us to remember that it is not only the work this year, it was not only the work last year, right? But we are in the midst of building a progressive decade. And Wisconsin is poised to be just as important in the 2024 presidential math as it was in 2020. So how do we do our part? If you've heard me on these briefings before, again, you'll know that Wisconsin is a favorite for huge Republican investments over the last 20, 20 sorry, over the last 10 years. But we can do better and it is our turn to invest better and build out that progressive 2020s in Wisconsin. We started two years ago. We will win this year and we're going to keep going strong in 2024 and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Rima. Oh, gosh. Oh. Um, so next up, we are going around to Pennsylvania um, and we're going to hear from Theo Oshiro co-executive director of Make the Road Action, who is, spoiler, is not actually from Pennsylvania, um, but is in Pennsylvania right now. It's a, uh, Theo uh, co-runs a national organization, um, anchor partner you're gonna be, hear about, um, but the the EDs in Pennsylvania are working hard in the action. So, so Theo is pitch hitting um, from Pennsylvania. Welcome to the, the MVP show, Theo. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Thank you so much. Um, and I want to start just by thanking the MVP family for all of your amazing support over the years. We couldn't do this important work without all of you. Um, so thank you so much. Um, my name is Theo Oshiro. I'm uh, the co-executive director of Make the Road Action. Um, I'm actually uh, based in New York. Um, however, uh, the Make the Road family is a large one. We have um, uh, a deep presence in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, New York, 
and uh, Nevada. Um, and so uh, we are so, so excited. We're on the eve of a throwdown in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, our members across the board, across all of our states felt it was critically important um, to take part uh, in the amazing work uh, happening on the ground in Pennsylvania and are, as we speak on their way to Pennsylvania or already in Pennsylvania, planning a multi-day um, event where we will be door knocking uh, and talking to um, communities directly about the upcoming elections. Um, the great leaders, we're, we're really gonna follow the lead of some amazing member leaders in Pennsylvania, as well as people like our state director in Pennsylvania, Megan Yerena, um, who is the daughter of Peruvian immigrants who were pushed out of New York because of the housing crisis here um, and moved with her parents to Lehigh Valley, right? Um, where there is a huge uh, working class and immigrant community moving out of New York in places like New York and New Jersey. Uh, and Megan has been a powerhouse who has grown Make the Road Pennsylvania to three offices and has been a pivotal present pre presence in local, statewide, and national elections. Uh, and working alongside people like our director of organizing in Pennsylvania, Patty Torres, who's an immigrant from Ecuador, um, has been part of the Make the Road family since she was a child, right? As as a and then into her teenage years, joining as a member, working primarily um, primarily on housing and tenant issues. Um, and so we have a deep presence in Pennsylvania and amazing leadership. Um, you know, what we're gonna be doing um, in the coming, well, actually, let me take one step back and remind everyone one, that in 2020, we did something similar um, where we threw down across our states to evict Trump from the White House. And we ran our largest program in Pennsylvania where we made nearly 4 million voter contact attempts and galvanized Latinx and black voters. Um, and so, you know, our members were so motivated um, by 2020 and had such an amazing experience and th this throwdown moment that they wanted to do it again. Um, you know, as you'll see, high turnout um, and democratic performance among Latinx and Black voters helped flip Pennsylvania um, uh, to be blue. And so we were particularly proud of, you know, of our efforts in 2020. Um, now we're back at it again, right, with a plan to knock on 450,000 doors by election day with a focus on Lehigh, Berks, Bucks, and Philadelphia counties and surrounding areas, and going to be focused on the critical U.S. Senate and governor's races, um, right, uh, in Fetterman, uh, in the U.S. Senate seat, Senate seat and holding the governor's seat, um, and also some key congressional and state legislative races. I want to emphasize, though, that in addition to knocking on doors, this is not only going to be doors uh, and voter contact. It's really going to be going deep in developing the leadership of our members, right? Uh, making sure that we're using this moment so that our members are building relationships, right, outside of their states and building their own capacity to talk about issues, to motivate their friends and neighbors to vote uh, and to, to knock on doors. Um, so tomorrow we will be sending 300 members from our five states um, to this throwdown in Pennsylvania. We're gonna be doing trainings, uh, building relationships, as I mentioned, that culminate on Saturday um, with a uh, big community canvas, a huge community canvas to knock on as many as 10,000 doors. So for us, um, it's transformative when our members who have similar lived experiences and speak Spanish um, are the ones knocking on doors and having conversations about issues uh, and candidates. Um, and it will be members like Jeffries here. Um, you see his picture here. He's a resident of Westchester County in New York, and he's coming to Pennsylvania for four days. An immigrant from the Dominican Republic, he joined our organization to stand up to injustice that he and other tenants face every day with skyrocketing rents and displacement. Uh, he's been very active here in New York, but he knows that the country's future for tenants, for immigrants is at stake this fall. So see, he's so excited to go to Pennsylvania to meet members from around the country and build his own skills. Um, and so with that, our members at the, at the center of this fight and with your support, uh, we, we know we can hold the Senate and keep the governor's mansion in de democratic hands and at the same time, build a community power we'll need for the years to come. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Theo. And also shout out 
the I, I love the multi-state thing with states supporting each other. You guys are always also working on key house races in New York and New Jersey um, that that don't get as much attention as as you work in Pennsylvania. Um, so just you know, just so much love to you all as as you do that work. Next up, we have Aisha Yakub Mahmoud from Asian American Advocacy Fund in Georgia who many of you got to hear about during the runoffs and, and really led an incredibly crucial effort to win the presidency in Georgia by only 10,000 votes and win those Senate runoffs um, and has also been on the front lines of holding Asian American communities through incredibly traumatic violence um, over these past few years. We're, I mean, uh, we're, we're just honored to have you here. and. Uh, can't wait to hear all about Georgia. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. And um, thank you to the MVP team for inviting me to join this call tonight. It's so energizing to hear about the great work that all of our colleagues are doing um, around the country. And just to get a chance to, to hear about your exciting work just gives me lots of ideas to take back to my team. So I always appreciate these settings. Um, so Georgia, uh, seems like Georgia is on everyone's minds again this year, and we are stoked. Um, after incredible victories in 2020 and 2021, our team has been hard at work trying to win some of these key races in November. Um, now, it goes without saying that there's a lot at stake here in Georgia, um, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard about all of the impacts of gerrymandering, anti-voting legislation, right-wing extremists in our state, um, and we are truly feeling the impacts of this. Now, I do have to take a moment of personal privilege to point out that I live in Northwest Georgia in Marjorie Taylor Greene's congressional district, so I definitely feel the right-wing extremism um, day in and day out, but regardless, um, we know that um, organizing and organizing in, in Georgia has incredibly important um, consequences, and we've, we've seen some of these impacts even this year during the May primary election. I know that um, we hear a lot about the victories in 2020 and 2021, but I do wanna brag on our, our incredible efforts from earlier this year, where we worked to turn out our communities for primaries in which democratic incumbents were pitted against each other because of the political gerrymandering Oops. towards our Republicans. Um, despite this, we were able to run field, phones, digital, mail, ethnic media, all of that great stuff to support an incredibly incredible progressive slate of candidates. Now, through the general election, we are working our butts off to not only hold Senator Warnock's Senate, Senate seat, but also winning back governing power here in the state. Um, I hope you can see some of my artwork. We just got a lot of our art and our um, lit ready for the general election. We've got some incredible art artists and um, influencers that are supporting our work this year, but really trying to make sure that we are not just winning these two statewide races, but also investing in the down ballot races to build on that governing power and making sure that Stacey has the support she needs to get things done when in office. Um, so how are we doing this? Um, well, we're going to do all the things uh, just like we did in 2020. Um, this year, we brought back our Asians for Abrams campaign, which as some of you might remember, um, is a campaign that we mobilized in 2018 to um, engage Asian American progressives to support Stacey Abrams back back then. Um, we've brought this campaign back and we're, we're just so energized even more than before because we know how important 2022 is and the pathway um, that we have in front of us through holding the presidency again in 2024. Um, now, what does this Asians for Abrams campaign do? Um, across Asians for Abrams and our PAC work, we have an incredibly um, important set of tactics ahead of us. Um, and we're already, um, we're already making our way there. We have a team of 20 canvassers, um, and we hope to knock about 50,000 doors across some of our key state house districts in upwards of six languages. Um, we have a team of about 20 phone bankers, and we hope to call 150,000 voters statewide in upwards of eight different languages. Um, we hope to send about 900,000 pieces of mail to our statewide universe in four different languages. Um, we hope to gain almost 20 million impressions across our digital platforms, um, place ads in 20 plus ethnic media channels in different languages, um, and hold rallies, cultural visibility events, and mobilizations to help our communities show up and leave no votes on the table. 
Now, I'm so appreciative to MVP for hosting this call with the focus on helping us raise PAC dollars. Um, as most of you all know, um, PAC dollars are incredibly hard to raise, especially um, in, in, in races where maybe um, people aren't paying as much attention. We've got a lot of interest on Abrams and Warnock, but we have so much um, we have so much of a focus on down ballot races that don't get enough attention. And so um, we, we're so supportive for the continuation of uh, support in the in the way of PAC dollars. And none of the work that I just mentioned would be possible without political dollars, especially PAC dollars. Um, and through an incredibly complex legal and compliance system, our team is ready to throw down, work across the ballot, across tactic, and with all of the tools in our toolbox. So if you'd like to support our efforts, um, please continue to support the great work of MVP. Also donate to us directly. My colleague Iman will drop in some links in the chat so you can learn how to support our work. We have about a million dollar gap um, in our PAC funding and additional C4 funding gaps. But as I mentioned, any additional funding will help to scale up our programs and be able to provide more materials in more languages and talk to more voters. Um, and if you'd like to take a trip down to Georgia, please come by. We have lots of doors to knock, an incredible team ready to get you trained um, and on the doors. So thank you. And thank you again to the MVT, MVP team for having us um, here today. Thank you, Aisha. Um, just, we're doing really good on time. So just want to make a couple plugs. If people want to get involved, um, directly. And there's a great organization, partner organization, Seed the Vote, um, that helps to place volunteers from out of state in, in helpful ways in partnership with, um, with local partners. Um, and yeah, just want to definitely make sure people um, have the information to donate directly. And before we go to Jillian, just want to give a super shout out to all of our um, MVPs state advisors. Um, I'm seeing in the chat conversation, um, people are asking Katie, Katie Sipp, our awesome Pennsylvania state advisor, about um, the, the GOP's tactics in Allentown. They started a Latinx community center in Allentown. You know, these are the things they're doing. They piloted that in Florida, um, which is part of the reason why we have to keep investing in Florida, because they're piloting all this terrible stuff there. So, um, and just just want to shout out, you know, Rima and Jillian. We could have listened to them talk for an hour about the the ecosystems in their states. They they each fund all of our state advisors fund between thirty and fifty local organizations in the state, including emerging groups that they help start. Um, Jillian, in addition uh, to working with MVP, has helped co-found two of our partner organizations. And in her spare time is a member of the Durham City Council um, and is former mayor pro tem of Durham. Uh, and we're so curious to hear all about North Carolina, Jillian. Thank you, Billy. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight um, and giving me the opportunity to talk with you all a little bit about the exciting happenings um, here in my adopted home state of North Carolina. Um, we are in the middle of a really exciting uh, race for U.S. Senate. Our candidate, Sherry Beasley, um, was one of the saddest losses in 2020. She lost a statewide race for, um, for Chief Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court by 406 votes. It was one of the worst races that we have had to deal with, one of the worst losses. But now we are being redeemed because we know that Cherry Beasley can run and be successful statewide. And right now she's in a dead heat with the Republican candidate, a notorious Trumper uh, named Ted Budd. Um, we just found out today, I just learned today that Ted Budd is going to, in, in, the, um, in the US House is going to be co-sponsoring a 15-week abortion ban. And as terrible as that, as that legislation is, it's actually going to be good for us because abortion rights is one of the few issues that's polling well against Republicans in North Carolina right now. So a lot of our partners, including the Beasley campaign, are going all in on abortion rights and calling out Republicans for, um, for these really damaging abortion bans that are affecting people um, all over the country. North Carolina is 
the closest state for people from a number of southern states with trigger bans to be able to access abortion care. And so we are really using that as an issue to mobilize mobilize voters for Sherry Beasley and for um, for all of the other folks on on the uh, down the ballot. Um, we were lucky to gain a uh, U.S. House seat in our in our last redistricting, and so we are now we now have the and also we had a special master redraw our maps, which had been horribly gerrymandered. We have much better maps now for the U.S. House and have the opportunity to pick up this seat, which is in um, Southern Wake County and a few surrounding counties, very very exurban um, kind of area. This candidate, Wiley Nickel, is a current state senator, um, and he's been pretty solidly progressive as a senator. People are pretty excited about him and um, and we have had a lot of interest, a lot of interest in his race. Right now, um, that race is polling as well as, as polling as a toss up and the uh, partisan lean for that district is also a toss up. I think by by most standards, the Democrats have a, a tiny, tiny edge, um, but we are, we are going hard investing in that seat and we know that, that it's winnable and it's something that we, a lot of our groups are paying a lot of attention to. So what are we doing in North Carolina? Um, like Aisha said, all the things, we're doing all the things. Um, one thing that's really exciting for me this year is that our groups are back on the doors. They are consistently um, back out into in communities talking to people face to face. And that's really important because we did really lose a lot of ground when we were only able to do um, phone banking and text banking. There's something about a face to face connection that's really important. Um, it was also really important for our groups to, to take care of each other and ourselves and our communities and public health and not be out there um, during, during the height of COVID. But now people are feeling a lot more confident about being out on doors and we're excited to see, to see our groups um, back out knocking. Another um, critical piece for us is youth organizing. There are a lot of colleges and uh, universities in North Carolina and a number of our organizations are working hard to register those students. There have been part, part of the right wing voter suppression strategy in North Carolina has been making it harder for college students to vote on campuses, vote here where they live. And so there's been a lot of misinformation um, that's been out on college campuses and our groups are, are working to correct that and also do poll protection everywhere. We know we, you know, in the past, North Carolina has been a site of um, unfortunately, a voter intimidation for people at the polls. So a lot of folks um, are doing that work. North Carolina is also a very rural state. And so reaching out to rural voters and not just focusing on those blue islands um, is really important. And we have a number of partners that, um, that do that work as well. And finally, we had a really exciting court victory um, earlier this year, effective uh, in July. There are 55,000 people who have former felony convictions and are on probation, parole, or post-relief supervision who are now eligible to vote. Um, there's a statewide campaign called Unlock Our Vote that four of our partners are participating in to get as many of those people registered and out to the polls as possible. 55,000 potential new voters in a state where we lost an election by 406 votes. It's an incredible opportunity for us to really turn the tide and, and you know, and beat some of these really small margins. So I'm excited about our chances. I'm more hopeful now than I ever have been. Um, and thanks everybody for your support. Uh now I'm getting really excited um, for North Carolina. God, I think we can win North Carolina. What do you guys think? Um, and also just want to give a shout out to the uh, the capacity building that um, that Jillian Rima and our state advisors and the capacity building team do. Like Jillian, you know, isn't just a funder. She, she works with the groups, is a thought partner to the groups, helps them connect with other funders. She, she organized a convening to bring a, a bunch of them together to strategize. Um, they listen to groups and what are all their kinds of needs? We help about 200 groups get their tech tools at a discount to do all these this voter organizing. Um, so just super shout out to, to the capacity building work um, as well. Um, next up, we're going to go all the way over to Nevada um, and hear from Mario Yadidia, who runs um, the, he's the field director 
for um, for Unite Here International Union. And you know, listen, we don't normally fund labor unions. You think labor unions have their own money. Well, Unite Here used to have its own money until no one wanted to go to hotels anymore for, for a couple of years. So, um, so Unite Here has an incredible, you've heard about the power of the culinary workers in, in uh, Nevada. They also operate in several other states in, in Virginia, Pennsylvania, Arizona. So Mario runs that nationally, but actually lives in Vegas and is you know, it's just one of the, the biggest, most effective election programs out there. And, um, and I'm gonna, gonna pass it um, on to Mario, who's also a vice president of the, the California Labor Federation while living in Vegas. I don't know how you do that, but um, Mario, we're really excited to hear um, about all things Nevada. And we're worried about Nevada. It's been a lot of like, stories about how you've been on a razor's edge. As well, we should be worried, that is. Uh, thank you, Billy. Good evening, sisters and brothers and siblings. Thank you, Billy, and thank you to the MVP team and the partners on this call and everybody who has decided to join this evening. Um, your leadership is utterly inspiring and absolutely necessary. Uh, so yeah, my name is Mario Yadidia. I'm the National Field Director for the Hospitality Workers Union, Unite Here. Before the pandemic, we represented 300,000 workers in hotels, casinos, airports, and stadiums across the US and Canada. And in 2020, like Billy mentioned, COVID's utter devastation of our industry resulted in 98% of our members being laid off. But we decided that getting rid of Trump was essential work, and we com are committed in our political work to the same organizing model that makes us a successful militant trade union, namely face-to-face -face conversations. So we planned and we executed uh, COVID safe canvassing. We mobilized 3,000 of our members in 2020 to knock on 4.6 million voters doors in Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Florida, and in the US Senate runoffs in Georgia. No one got COVID as a result of that campaign, but I would note to the earlier point about how sophisticated Republicans are that in every general election state where we knock doors, the Trumpers were out there before us. Um, I'm speaking to you today from the Culinary Workers Union in Vegas. Uh, we have 60,000 members here. We pay for health care for 150,000 people. We are a social institution in this town, and we've been a part of transforming the politics of the state over the course of the last 25 years. But two critical things are on the ballot this year. Democracy in Nevada. We're up against a Republican gubernatorial nominee who was Trump's chief counsel in this state for his big lie attempts after the 2020 election. That person's name is Adam Laxall. We're up against a Secretary of State candidate who the Republicans have put up named Jim Marchant. Maybe you've heard of him. He's a flamboyant election uh, denier and conspiracy theorist. And the Chief of Police of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, Joe Lombardo, is the Republican candidate for governor. Um, and he too is a big liar. Um, our enemies are openly saying they're going to count votes howsoever they choose in 2024 if they win this year. And the stakes for our union uh, are really, really significant for all working people, regardless of whether they have a trade union or not. Um, we have a housing crisis in Nevada that's difficult to overstate. Rents are up 30% in Las Vegas. They're up 22% in Reno. And people are struggling greatly. Every race that I'm talking to you about today, the governor's race, the Senate race, the three congressional races in Las Vegas are Cook Political Report certified toss-ups. They haven't changed, and we don't anticipate that they will in the next 55 days. This slide shows you an important fact, sisters, brothers, and siblings, that fundamentally Nevada is a deeply purple state. The surface level conventional wisdom is that the state has become increasingly blue, but the reality of those win numbers for president in front of you, tell the real story, which is that Democrats have had an increasingly hard time winning in that state. You can see Obama won the state by 120,000 votes in 2008, and Biden eked out a less than 34,000 vote victory in 2020. We can go two slides forward, I think. Thank you much. What it's gonna take to win, I spoke about the housing crisis just a moment ago, which is something that matters a great deal to so many people. Gas, I'll still note, is over a dollar a gallon above the national average right now. One more, please. 
Um, given the massive challenge of the political environment that I just described, the political professionals would say the fundamentals are against us with respect to the economic reality of what inflation and gas mean for working people. We have known for well over a year that we need the biggest program ever, right? So we're knocking uh, 1.1 million times a universe of uh, 376,000 doors. We're going after 600,000 voters. It's that mix of Latinos, white people, Black folks, Asian Americans, who you need to win in this state, both Democrats and nonpartisans. To date, we have 253 people on the ground. Uh, we're not a paid canvas. So our members, housekeepers, bartenders, dishwashers, and cooks are our canvas operation. Um, and it's different when working people talk to working people. We do think that that is the key to electoral victory. Um, this election will be decided by Halloween. As you can see on the next slide, 90% of all ballots that got cast in this state two years ago were cast early in person or by mail. That's going to happen again. Uh, there's also this critical early in person, uh, early vote period in Nevada. So the punchline is we need your money now. Uh, if we could go one more slide, right, let's just do two more. The closeness of the race, I think I've already impressed upon you. We still have a $7 million budget gap. Under our contracts, it takes 30 days to take a worker out of the casino and put them on union leave of absence. We need your support. We need it now. We can win in the state. We know how to do it, but we need the MVP family to come through. Si se puede, thanks. Whoa, thank you, Mario. Um, I'm like, oh, we gotta go raise more money for these groups. <laughs> like, honestly, y'all, we're we're freaking out. Like all, all the executive directors of national organizations that are trying to move money are hearing from the groups that we support. And they're like, where's the money this cycle? Where's the money? It, especially the hard money, the PAC money, the C4 money. And so, okay. So I'm going to transition us um, to the best part of this for you all. Uh, well, I don't know. It was all the best part, which is how do we organize um, after listening to these incredible organizers? So I'm going to pass it to uh, my incredible colleague, Shana Weichel, um, from who's our national donor organizing manager, um, to talk about how do we organize better ourselves to support these incredible groups, Shana. Thank you, Billy. Hi, everyone. I'm Shauna Wayhill, MVP's National Donor Organizing Manager. And if what you've heard this evening inspires you to take action, we'd love for you to donate and become involved. Joining me now is MVP donor and volunteer Peggy Taylor. Peggy is an educator and writer in addition to being a dedicated member in our volunteer community. She is going to share just a bit of how meaningful it is to contribute to the work that grassroots community groups are doing on the ground. Welcome, Peggy. Thank you, Shauna. Oh, it's so exciting to be here today, and I'm I'm just I'm I'm overwhelmed. Um, the 2020 election was the first time I gave any serious money to political causes, and and I was getting dozens of requests, as I imagine you were. Um, uh oh, my dog. Sorry, everybody. This is real life, y'all. This is real life. Real life dog. <laughs> it, it's not just the humans that are fired up this election. <laughs> anyway, I was getting dozens of requests, as I imagine you were. And it was pretty random. So, and I'd give something here and something there. So, when I learned about MVP from my son and my good friend, uh, it was just the ticket for me because, as we all know, MVP does the vetting for us. They're so strategic. And so I could put my money into MVP, and it could, it could work so much better. Um, and so working strategically through these amazing grassroots organizations. And I know myself through personal experience that people in grassroots organizations stretch a dollar into $100 they're so passionate, their commitment is so strong, and they work so hard. These people put themselves on the line 24-7. They put themselves on the line, body and soul. So my job right now is to invite you to join me in donating to MVP tonight. 
whether you are new to MVP or you're, you're an ongoing supporter. It's six weeks out, and it's actually the next two weeks, September, are the most important time we can, we can up, our, up our commitment. Because the money we provide now to fuel this network of grassroots organizations can really make the difference in this organization, in this uh, election. So I want to start by just asking you to close your eyes or lower your gaze for a moment and imagine the kind of world you most want. Imagine what you want for your kids, if you have kids, or your nieces and nephews or cousins. What do you want for your grandchildren? What do you want for yourself? And what do you want for this precious planet that's our home? It's a pretty amazing moment. Just imagine that we can do this. And now I want you to think about the assets you have in your life. The money you have, the social connections you have, Think about that abundance in your life. And now think about where your assets and your dream for this world most meaningfully connect. What would be your most meaningful gift at this point? What would that look like? And now I want you to imagine what a stretch gift would look like. I know for myself, I'm pretty conservative around spending, and my inclination is to spend as little as I can and leave what's left for my kids after I die. And yet I've come to realize that by following that strategy at this critical time in our history, I'm actually doing a disservice to my children. I need to invest now in a future that they want to live in. So I give as big as I can to MVP. I stretched big in 2020, way beyond what I thought was possible. I did so again in 2021, and when 2022 came around, I did it again. And I thought I had given more than I could afford already this year. But actually, I'm so inspired tonight, and I feel so passionate about the need and the potential uh, that I'm donating another 1,000 tonight. And it feels good. It feels so good. This is something that we can do, something strategic, something meaningful, and something loving, giving our love, loving together the, fut the future that we want to have. So this is it. This time matters perhaps more than any other time in all the years we've walked on this planet. I imagine you've got many causes calling on you just as I do, and of course, if you don't give, that's totally fine. But my hope is that you will surprise yourself, that you will choose to dig deep, dig deeper than you even imagined, and donate along with me tonight. I invite you to jump in with as large a donation as you can tonight and to continue to support MVP in the future. Let's join our hearts together to create the future that we want. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peggy. What a deeply inspirational story to leave tonight with. If Peggy's story has inspired you and you feel empowered to take action, one of the ways you can do so is to donate right now using the link in the chat. Um, and we are going to also move forward with a poll on screen now to get a sense of folks, of how folks might want to be involved. You'll also get an email with links afterwards. Um, and the first thing you can do is to get your friends to give now. We make it very easy. You can use our tool to create a personal fundraising page. And if you're looking for extra support, 
You can join our fundraising training on September 22nd with yours truly. Um, and the other thing you can do is host or co-host a house party. We're holding these parties with a purpose. Between now and election day, inviting our networks to join us, sharing about MVP, and giving folks a chance to align their money with their values. It takes work, but it's fun, it's meaningful, and we'll give you all that you need to make it a success. Thank you so much for your support of this work. Over to you, Billy, to close us out. Oh God, I'm speechless. Um, wow, I'm still I'm still kind of in a zone with um, where you took us to, Peggy. Um, and I'm thinking about, you know, I I I usually I told my five year old like I can't read to you tonight. I'm talking with grown ups about how we have to save the election, save the country. He was like, "It's okay, Daddy. Like, you you can go talk to the grown ups about about that." And um, but I don't now. I'm like, "Wow, how much can I donate?" Um, so I have to have some conversations and think about that. Um, and because it really is, it, it kind of brings me back to after we won those those Senate runoffs in in twenty twenty one in January fifth. Um, we, we made a plan as an organization. We said, can we make the 2020s a progressive decade that actually turns things around? And some of you were on that call where I laid out a tale of two decades. One is a decade where we win a bunch of stuff. Uh, we, we win the elections and then we win the legislation and we change policy and we change lives and we do something about the climate crisis and, and bring more equality to this world. Um, and the other is a very scary path that leads us toward authoritarianism and white nationalism and, and, um, and violence and, and, and just climate disaster. Um, and, and as I analyzed, you know, okay, how do we get a progressive decade looking at the next 10 years? It quickly became very clear that the decade was gonna be defined by the 2024 election, which was actually gonna be decided in large part in 2022, when all the secretaries of state and governors who are gonna decide the voting rules get elected. And it's just hitting me that we laid out that stark path that was all going to come down to 2022 and 2022 is right now and it's game time. And, um, and it's, it's like this, this incredible historical moment that I'm just feeling that where we, we have the opportunity to actually like bend history this way or it's gonna go that way. And so I just just kind of wanna like mentally hold hands with, with everyone in this call, like we are in this together um, and just thinking about, um, thinking about our children and grandchildren and everyone we love and care about. Um, and, and also just, I just feel, it's so funny listening to Mario, um, this is, I wasn't planning to tell this story, but uh, I met Mario when he was in college and I came to his college and I was like, everyone needs to drop out of school and do something about the 2024, the 20, the 2004 election, the Bush election. And Mario and his friends came up to me and they're like, all right, we're going to quit school. We're, where do you need us to go? They moved down to Florida and now Mario is this incredible organizer and his you know, friend Brian is, runs an incredible organization in Philly and our friend Val runs Texas Freedom Network. It's these moments that change lives that like people who are just getting involved build relationships with each other. And this is like the community that 
it, and, and it's like such a meaningful community to be part of and just thank you all for being part of this and if, if you want to be more connected like Shauna and the donor organizing team have so many great ways to to hold people's hands to get involved to do house parties we now have these community house parties that you can co-host um, so you don't have to organize a whole house party yourself. You can just say, oh, okay, I'll be a co-host on this date. I'll send it to my friends. Boom, you did a house party. We're, we're, we're getting closing in on a hundred house parties already this year there. And together, I think they've touched almost 5,000 people through the RSVPs. And the thing is the vast majority of people who share our values don't know MVP exists, don't know Asian Americans advancing justice you know, and Asian American and, and, you know, make the road and uh, they don't know these groups exist. And, and so we just have a really simple, beautiful job to let people know about these incredible groups you've heard of tonight. Everyone's going to get a copy of this recording. You can share it with people, you can volunteer. Um, and we're at time. And so I just want to say a huge thank you to Aisha, to Theo, to Mario, to Rima, to Jillian, to all of your teams and to everyone who's been working so hard, you know, and to Shauna and Peggy and, and everyone behind the scenes and the MVP team who got together to make this, this call happen. A lot of people working behind the scenes um, to make, to make this, this work. And together we're moving tens of millions of dollars that are gonna make a difference in this election and we're gonna wake up after election day and, and see the results of everything that we did. So thank you everyone for being part of this. Thank you for everything you do. Let's hold hands and do this together over the coming days and get that, that world that Peggy was talking about, get the progressive decade that our country and our world so badly deserves and so badly needs and it's gonna set us up for the future that we need. So thank you so much, everyone. Let's go out and keep winning. We know what winning looks like. Let's make more winning happen um, and keep celebrating and winning and changing this country in the way that we need. Thank you all for all the love. Let's just keep spreading it. Go team.